Most people don't quit learning web development because it's too hard. They quit because it's boring in the most soul-crushing way possible. They open a three-hour tutorial, copy code they don't understand, take notes they'll never read again, and at the end of it all, if you ask them how to create a new React project, they freeze. And the worst part is, they assume that's just how learning is supposed to feel. It's not. Web development is one of the few skills where you can see, touch, and break what you're learning in real time. And if you're not doing that, you're learning it wrong. The moment learning becomes fun is the moment you stop treating it like school and start treating it like building. Instead of telling yourself you're going to master Kubernetes and Spring Boot, you tell yourself you're going to make something exist by the end of the day, even if that thing is completely useless, especially if it's useless. A button that roasts you when you click it, a page that changes color depending on the time of day, a fake login screen that does absolutely nothing. When you build tiny things like this, your brain gets immediate feedback. You see cause and effect instantly. Change a line, refresh the page, something changes. That that loop is addictive, and there's real science behind it. Active, project-based learning consistently beats passive consumption when it comes to retention, because your brain anchors concepts to something you created, not something you watched. Once you're building small things, the next step is to turn learning into a game by adding constraints. Unlimited freedom sounds nice, but it actually kills momentum. When you can do anything, you end up doing nothing. So you impose rules on yourself, you give yourself one hour, and that's it. You limit yourself to just bare HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at most. You rebuild a website layout without touching ChatGPT. Suddenly learning stops feeling like homework and starts feeling like a challenge. Constraints force your brain to problem solve instead of mindlessly copy-pasting. And that's where understanding actually forms. This is why game designers and creative professionals obsess over constraints. I mean, look at Claire Obscure Expedition 33. That game should not have succeeded on paper, and yet it claimed almost every Game of the Year award this year. At some point though, learning alone in silence starts to lose its edge. And that's where learning in public changes everything. This doesn't mean becoming an influencer or pretending you're an expert. It just means sharing proof of work, a screenshot, a short clip, a messy GitHub repo. When you know other people can see what you're building, even if it's just a handful of strangers, your brain treats learning like a commitment instead of a vague intention. Behavioral psychology calls this commitment bias. Once you've put something out there, you're far more likely to come back tomorrow and continue. Because stopping now feels like breaking a streak. And the irony is, people don't care that your code is bad. They care that it exists. Now we have to talk about AI, because pretending it doesn't exist is pointless. Used the wrong way, AI turns learning into a copy-paste exercise that feels productive but teaches you nothing. Used the right way, it becomes a playground. When an AI gives you code, your job isn't to paste it and move on. Your job is to interrogate it, change variables, remove lines, ask what happens if this breaks. Ask it to rewrite the same thing three different ways and compare them. Learning happens in the gap between what works and what doesn't, and AI is incredibly powerful at creating that gap fast. The key is curiosity, not convenience. The moment AI replaces your thinking, you lose. The moment it accelerates your experimentation, you win. All of this only works if you stop chasing mastery and start chasing momentum. You don't need six-hour study sessions. You don't need a perfect roadmap. You need consistency. 30 focused minutes a day compounds faster than you think, because every small win lowers the friction to start again tomorrow. This is how habits actually form, not through discipline alone, but through repeated proof that showing up leads to progress. Mastery is a side effect. Momentum is the goal. And this is the part most people get wrong about fun. Fun doesn't mean easy. It doesn't mean you're never confused or frustrated. Fun means you're engaged. It means you care enough to keep going even when something doesn't work the first time. When learning web development feels like building, experimenting, and shipping tiny wins, you stop asking whether you're smart enough and start asking what you can try next. And once that switch flips, learning stops being something you force yourself to do and starts being something you genuinely want to come back to. And speaking of building things while having fun, if you want to make really fun projects in more than 20 languages, check out my partner, Code Crafters, and get 40% off. Off. They are the most rated GitHub repo, and that's for a good reason. Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DNS server from scratch? Check! Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git, all while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. This was Codehead with yet another tech rant. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Lights out.